Hi there, I'm Alan Levine and I'm going to try to kick off uh, another round of amazing slash true uh, stories of sharing, uh, something I've been doing since about, uh, <laughs> Felix wants to be part of this video, something I've been doing since uh, 2009 and so uh, this one's about blogging, okay, so you know, blogging is kind of like, you know, it's passe, it's something people reminisce about all the TikToking and Instagram stories, etc. Um, and I do some of that stuff. But, you know, the thing about your own blog and your own domain is like all your stuff will always be there as long as you, you take care of it. And, and that's really important to me. But other things have happened uh, because of that. And uh, they often surprise me. So um, and these ones I'm going to tell about um, happen to uh, be about um, some family stories. Now, thing is, um, I always loved uh, hearing stories that my family members would tell. 1994, um, I got my grandmother to sit down, um, record it onto like an audio cassette, um, about 45 minutes of her telling stories of growing up and raising my dad and uh, things that they, they dealt with living um, in the early part of the 19th century. And I just love hearing her voice. Did the same thing for my mom. You know, my last visit with her, I got her to tell some stories like, you know, about where she grew up in Baltimore and um, how she met my dad. And so um, that's a side thing. But um, if your family members are still around, get them to sit down, get their voices recorded. You really won't regret it. The thing is now, I'm kind of at the top of the family tree, okay? You know, my parents are gone, my grandparents are gone. I don't have anybody to sort of fill in. So all I have are these little um, shreds of stories. So um, sometimes in my blog, I just happen to think, wow, you know, I have a memory um, and I like to like put out there um, what I have, what it means to me. And then sometimes things accidentally happen. And so um, that's what I'm gonna tell about. So uh, the first one, um, has to do um, with um, a woman who was a friend of my grandmother's. Her name was Gertrude Hammer. Um, I can remember it was like, she was like really short. Um, and I remember a few times um, my mom and my grandmother um, took me to visit Mrs. Hammer um, in her apartment. And it was unlike any other apartment I'd seen. You open the door and you looked and there was like stuff everywhere. And what that stuff was, was painting. She was a painter. She painted all the time. So um, I remember one time when I got the visit um, and sort of see that she was like living in her art studio, um, Mrs. Hammer uh, offered I could have one painting uh, for myself. And I must have been a little kid. So um, this is the one I picked out, this kind of black and white, kind of abstract one of old ships. You know, it appealed to me. And if you look in the corner, um, you can see it's got um, her signature. Um, so, you know, sometime um, uh, a year or two ago, I decided to sort of blog about this experience. Just write it. It's, it's for my own sake. It's just to get the stories down. Um, but then what happens is, unexpectedly, um, people find um, these stories because they're probably searching. They probably know Gertrude Hammer and they do some internet searching and they stumble across my blog. And they tell me things I would have never known. So um, one comment from Melanie, and I'm just going to read this. Um, Your blog post, which I serendipitously found this morning, made me extraordinarily happy. Gertrude Hammer is was my grandmother on my mother's side. I spent many hours in her magical art-filled apartment, which simultaneously smelled like, smelled like oil paint, turpentine, royal crown sours, she always sell them in her bag, double mint gum, and freshly baked cookies. That is exactly what it was like in her apartment. Um, Melanie continues, Gertrude was born in New York in 1899. Her birthday was April 14th. She studied art while in high school and showed a lot of promise, then put it all away when she got married. When her husband passed away and she was only in her 50s, the first thing she did was start painting again, and she painted and drew till she drew her last breath. I treasure every sketchbook I have and love the paintings I have at my house in New Mexico. Also, I saved her brushes and palette knives and her messy palettes, and I use her inks and charcoals to this day. She has two daughters, my Aunt Ruth Ellen and my mother Phyllis. Um, I look forward to sharing more memories with you soon. Have to catch the train. Like, where did that come from? How did she find this? But here she's filling in some of the, the stories, um, and one that just came in like two weeks ago. 
Um, a different one. I was stunned to read this about my great aunt Gertrude and so very happy um, to learn a bit about my family. My grandmother Molly was Aunt Gertrude's sister. My nana Molly was born in 1892 Manhattan and was one of the 12 sisters and brothers in the Goldstein clan. All or most musicians and artists. Aunt Gertrude was the artist I knew. While I had known many of the 12, they were peculiarly intense and artsy. I loved Aunt Gertrude when she would come to visit us in Brooklyn. My grandmother was a concert pianist, gave a recital once at Little Carnegie Hall next to Main Hall. My aunts were all very short, with Aunt Gertrude maybe the shortest. She was the artist my grandmother had always said, and she had twinkling eyes, I remember. All her sisters and brothers that I recall, and the stories were wonderful, weirdly wonderful. My grandma lived to 101 years. I believe I had met Ruth Ellen too. Um, that Aunt Gertrude lived in Baltimore and we in Brooklyn made those visits of her too rare. Again, I am touched at reading of her. I would have never had this experience were it not for my blog post and these people finding it. Filling in some of the gaps. I mean, this is not even stuff about Mrs. Hammer um, that, that, um, that I you know, heard about or remember as a kid. So. Um, Thank you very much um, to these two um, women who found my blog and wrote these stories. That's kind of amazing, right? Or is it? I don't know. Uh, second one about my grandfather, my paternal grandfather, my father's father. Um, he died uh, before I was born, um, so I never got to know him. Um, and I was thinking, you know, as I'm putting together this video, um, what do I have? Um, that sort of would be like a, uh, you know, a, a thing I could show in this video. And so um, what I have, and it occurred to me, um, is my name. And so here is uh, my, um, my uh, diploma from getting my uh, master's at ASU. Um, and so Alan H. Levine, um, I was named after uh, my grandfather. Um, who was actually Abraham Herman Levine. And so the story that my mom always told me was um, they wanted to name it after my grandfather to honor him. Um, but mom felt like Abraham was kind of like an old fashioned name. So uh, she kind of modernized the Allen. I still bear his middle name, Herman. And so um, I don't know much about my grandfather. Um, um, he uh, was kind of in the construction business. Um, he ended up being uh, vice president or very important of running uh, Baltimore Contractors, a, a big company in Baltimore that built um, a lot of uh, buildings um, around the town in the downtown Baltimore area and also at the University of Maryland um, campus. Um, but, you know, when I was thinking once about my grandfather and pulling together some pictures uh, for a blog post, um, I remember in one of the recording um, stories that I had from my grandmother um, that um, she mentioned, and, and I had totally forgotten this, um, and I'm reading from my post here, it says, um, she said that when they met, Abraham's father, um, I believe it was Isaac, and later the family referred to him as just the old man, who would have been my great-grandfather, um, made my grandfather quit school to be apprenticed with Isaac as a bricklayer. Um, but my grandmother says in this audio recording that she made him go um, to school and that he studied engineering at the International Correspondence Schools. And so wait a minute. My grandfather got a degree and made his life career because he did distance learning like back in the 20s. I think that was um, pretty amazing. And um, she also says in this little audio recording that it was this education in engineering that him uh, enabled um, him to move up um, into management and to um, run this company. And so I did a little research and International Correspondence Schools is, is still around. Um, but then this thing happened again, just like a week ago. Um, Susan commented and she says, uh, and I'm gonna read again, um, not sure if you're still doing your blog, but just thought I'd let you know my aunt worked for your grandfather as a secretary for many years. My older brother tells me from around 1947 to mid-1960s. I remember her speaking with great respect and fondness for her boss. She was thrilled when he presented her with a brand new IBM Selectric typewriter when they first came out. I have another funny story about that typewriter if you're interested. And so I'm kind of waiting for a um, student to come, uh, Susan to come back with that, that funny story. Um, and so 
Um, she probably will. And, you know, if she doesn't, I still have this like little bit of amazing story um, happening here. Um, and then the last one, which um, hasn't really um, happened yet, has to do with um, my grandfather on the other side. Um, my um, would be my actually my great grandfather would be um, my grandmother, whose stories are recorded. Um, her father, and she always uh, tells this story um, about him. Um, about him being a master, he was very smart, um, but he was like, um, uh, his wife died um, when all the kids were young, and he was a single dad with raising like six kids in Newark, New Jersey. Um, he kind of had sketchy jobs managing a, a restaurant. Um, but what my grandmother always told me about, um, and I have, is that um, my grandfather um, was a chess champion. And so what I have um, is, um, his original chess set um, that she had saved and my mom had saved and now I have and these are all these wooden hand carved chess pieces that are really beautiful um, but there's more I've got <laughs> I've got this original um, article um, about my grandfather um, it says at Al's restaurant corner of Clinton Place and Hawthorne Avenue you'll find Dave Gottfried um, genial night manager so that was his job Dave never lost a match game for the Newark Rice Chess Club. Also as the holder of a silver medal for the brilliancy prize at Bradley Beach several summers ago. This is from um, Jersey Chess. It was sort of a magazine. And I have um, right here, I've got my great-grandfather's uh, chess medal um, from, it's, it, the date's pretty small to read here, um, 1930, I believe, um, for his achievements. Um, so that bell press is hanging out there. Um, no one has found that one yet to tell me um, some stories about um, my great grandfather. Um, I tried um, Google Street View to find what was at the corner uh, of the streets mentioned there. Um, it looks like there's still a restaurant. Um, but I, I don't know much. So I'm hoping um, this is like seeding um, for some amazingness to happen. Um, this is just my own thing. I'm not saying this is for everybody else to do, uh, but I enjoy it because I like having these stories uh, to remember. It helps me think about um, my family uh, who are no longer around and just retelling those stories. And so the bonus is um, sometimes a blog comment comes in um, and then I just get a little bit more joy and I got a chance to make this video. So I'm hoping maybe um, I'm doing this for Open Education Week 2020, hoping maybe that um, some people may be inspired um, to do another. So um, those are my family blog comment stories and uh, I hope to hear yours.